Welcome to an all new episode of the Lisa Ann Experience. I am your host, Lisa Ann. And to start it off, I have to extend my gratitude to you for taking the time to make my podcast one of your listening experiences. This is going to be a fun one today. I have a friend and that friend is going to help us kick off the week that will be. The NFL season starts finally this Thursday with an amazing matchup. The Buffalo Bills taking on the Los Angeles Rams in Los Angeles at SoFi Stadium. And I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm as excited about the season as I am about the fact that I will no longer be pulling cameo draft orders, which got out of control this season, kind of doubled from last season, made me realize that I need an assistant to help me write them out so I could just be shooting them because it takes time to write them out. And then by the time I'd be done shooting them a ton more, it's a great time of the year for me to take advantage of having this platform. Cameo is so much fun, whether it's birthdays or bachelor parties, or there's a lot of roasts. I do a lot of roasts. And so being brought into these fantasy football leagues, learning all these wild team names, there's a lot of wild team names out there. I get to kind of hear it all. And some of the leagues that have been doing this with me have been doing this with me for three seasons since I started offering this. So it's a ton of fun, but it's a lot of work. And I know once that first game kicks off on Thursday, I will be able to sit on my couch and watch that game. And on Sunday, be on my couch all day long between the big chair and the couch, chatting on social media with those of you who visit me Sunday morning. So every Sunday morning, I host a YouTube live during the season. Starts at 11 a.m. Eastern time. It gives me a chance to help fantasy owners set their lineups. You know, you're asking me your start sip sit questions, uh, different players. We'll talk some DFS, daily fantasy sports. I'll put out free challenges like I do every season, just for us to play against each other for bragging rights. I'll talk some sports betting. But every Sunday, when I do this, I find myself so incredibly excited when I've given good information. Because you know. Things happen. You give bad info sometimes. Sometimes you thought a player was going to do better than he did. But when I pick the right player for someone that's visited me in my room for my YouTube lives, which I call Football Sundays, when I pick the right player, there's such a level of joy to find them on Twitter and tweet with them during the game. So I'm really looking forward to all of it. It's a nice downturn of the year. The summer, we're out doing more things. The weather's great. There's all this going on. And then come fantasy football season, I get to really just kick back. And before it kicked off, I was on a bit of a travel tear, a lot of travel, a lot of travel to different drafts, a lot of travel. I went out to Denver for Fit Soda, which was an awesome trip. I am the commissioner of their very first company-wide fantasy football league. We all sat in this great conference room together, and I kind of walked everybody through it because there were quite a few people that were new to fantasy football. But the smack talk had already started. Once the draft was over, my team's better than yours. I got this grade from Yahoo. It was hilarious. And it just reminded me again how this is something that just brings a different level of banter, of entertainment. If you're a sports fan, if you're a football fan, fantasy football could be such a great way to connect with people on something other than maybe talking about work or all of the other things that you've got going on. So I hosted that draft. Uh, We also shot a ton of content for a new campaign that Fit Soda is going to be running called Fit Soda Famous. You're going to love every bit about this. We launch in October. That is just a teaser. I cannot give you more information, but I know there's going to be weekly prizes. There's going to be cash on the line. There's also going to be the weekly prize, a one-on-one video chat with me. So there's going to be a lot of goodness that comes out of this. You're going to see me starting to promote it like nonstop. So once you do, and I'll be doing lives, talking to everyone about it, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And I really love doing anything with the whole team at FitSoda. It's a really great group of people that work incredibly well together, a lot of different personalities and uh, senses of humor and just, just awesome, just such great people. So I went to Denver for their draft, came back for a quick day uh, to the city, changed bags, had some meetings, had some things to do, flew right back out again. Went to host a draft in Austin, Texas. I always forget 
how a couple of things I always forget about Austin. It's such a party city. That downtown 6th Avenue, I think it's 6th Street. Um, everybody out just riding on scooters. Like it's just kind of a little, it has a very college town vibe to me. But I also forget how damn humid it is still down there. I complain about New York City heat. The heat in Austin is just next level because it's still really hot at night. I went there and on both of these trips, I had great hotels. So something you should know about me, the person, Lisa, um, I love good hotels. I just love good hotels. And when we were traveling during the pandemic, I missed staying in good hotels. I know it's such a splurge. I know everything is so expensive, but when I get to travel and someone actually asks me, what's your request for a hotel? It's usually a text. I get this. I usually write back bougie. Okay. Just think bougie. And that stems from so many years on the road where clubs would just put us in the worst hotels. And the worst thing about that is you also watch a club, a strip club, sell a bottle of Grey Goose for a thousand dollars that they got for like $15, but yet they wouldn't spend the extra hundred dollars. Like I would battle my base hotel my last couple of years on the road. I remember this started after Palin. I remember calling my agent when I was in the Eminem video and Palin was really popping off. And I said, yo, fuck these shitty hotels. Like I'm going to tell you right now, fuck these shitty hotels. Weston is, is and Weston are better, but Weston's are always great. They have a limited 24 hour room service menu, uh, which on it has some great veggie wraps and tomato basil soup, which is awesome. Like I know I've memorized, I memorized food at hotels. I know what I'm going to get night one. I know all of these things. And I remember just being like, you know, like this is really, this is all blowing up. I should not have to stay in shitty hotels. And the clubs were just nickel and dime us. So now that I'm out traveling in this new environment with businesses that are doing business with me and seeing that I bring value, they put me in amazing hotels. So in Denver, I stayed at the Ritz Carlton. And my last time in Denver, I stayed at the Four Seasons. Now I've got to see them both. Loved them both. Uh, but I wasn't in my hotel as much in Denver because it was such a short and busy trip. And then in Austin, I stayed at the Four Seasons. Four Seasons in Austin is superb. I just love the, just when you walk into a Four Seasons or a Ritz Carlton, the very first thing you see is this beautiful glass table that is just filled with flowers that are so dreamy and so perfect. And they're always in a theme, you know, it's all one color or it's a mix for the season. And like just the scent of these flowers, the scent of a good hotel. So when I was at the Four Seasons, I got in a day early because I had to do radio on Friday remotely, and I was too concerned about maybe a flight delay or something and missing some of my shows. I kicked off Fantasy Football Fridays August 19th. I wasn't already going to take a Friday off. You know what I mean? Like I'm saving those off days. I'm saving for when I'm in Switzerland. I'm saving for Thanksgiving So I'm going to go with my friends to Tahoe. So like I'm saving. So I knew I had to get in early. And I got in early, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to enjoy the gym. Uh, cause, and I did the Ritz Carlton too. Hotels have, those hotels have awesome gyms. So I like want to use every amenity. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the spa. I'm going to book a massage. I'm going to sit in the sauna. I'm going to sit in the quiet room. And when I go to a spa like that at a nice hotel spa, if my appointment's at five, I'm going down there at like 3.30. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to shower. I'm going to use all their products. I'm going to sit in the sauna. I'm going to go to the quiet room and I'm going to have some tea and some snacks. I'm going to take a nap because then by the time you get into the room for your massage, you're really already a bit of like jello. You're already relaxed. You got this thing going. So like when I went to the Four Seasons Spa, they had a Himalayan salt lamp wall. The whole wall was a Himalayan salt lamp. It was so beautiful and so calming. And so I decided to go for round two uh, last night uh, before I, I was flying out early this morning. So I was like, you know, I want to go to bed early. Got back to the room early in the afternoon after the draft. And I was like, you know, I should call down and see if there's a service available. And there was. And I will say, I think I had the best. If you are at the Four Seasons in Austin, please request Jose may have been the best massage I've ever had in my life. I told him that when he handed me my water in the hallway. I'm like, Jose, everything. Like there's just a certain way if you're someone that loves to spa like I do, that there's a certain way that a really good therapist doesn't break contact with you, first of all. 
knows how to get lotion without making a ton of noise from the dispenser. Um, and also the way they tuck the sheets around you, you know, when they're moving your leg and tucking your legs so you're covered, there's a very specific way. And when I had my massage, when I had my spa in Huntington Beach, California for four years, one of the things I did was, was always trying out different massage therapist places. And I was always doing the test massage before I'd hire a therapist. And that was a big thing to me. There's so many little details of a great therapist. So I want to give props to Jose. I asked the front desk for his full name so I could write a review. I'm not a not nice review writer. I don't write bad reviews, but I don't spend enough time writing reviews and I should. So I want to give a review to Jose because that was the most epic massage and the greatest way to end this incredibly wild travel terror of like multiple different places going here and there. And then through all of this, I've still been drafting my team's. So I wasn't in the draft for these. I'm commissioning. I'm co-managing a team in the one team in Austin. So I had a draft today at 1 p.m. My flight was landing at 1230. I'm at JFK. I checked one small bag. So I'm like, okay, if I could just get to the cab and I could just do this in the car, like I'm going to be able to do this. I had my Wi-Fi hotspot. I was like, ready, ready, ready. So plane lands on time, get gate on time which is kind of unheard of right now with traveling. All you read all day is, oh, there were 3,000 delays yesterday. I'm like, please don't let this be down. I get downstairs. I'm excited. I feel good from this massage. I'm excited to be home for a while. Going to watch games all weekend. And my bag comes down first. I'm like the fantasy football gods have my back right now. Grab my bag in the cab by 10 of one. So I'm able to smack talk in the chat a little bit before the, the draft even kicks off. I'm like, you all ready to go down now. I finished in second place in that league uh, last season. It's uh, with the Dave and Jeff podcast, Dave and Jeff show. I'm actually doing their podcast later today to kind of talk about the draft and, and reconnect. I haven't been a guest for them for quite some time. So I was so excited to be able to, all the timing of it worked out. I have another draft tonight at 9 p.m. Uh, just drafting, 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 but it's all about preparing for the season. So I've each draft, I feel like I'm more focused on bye weeks. I'm more focused on balance. I'm more focused, but it has been a hectic, hectic bit of time. And I'm looking forward to the decompress. Labor Day is tomorrow. I don't know if Mother Nature is going to do me a favor and allow me to be at the pool, but if she doesn't, then I'll take it as an indoor day and just kind of regroup, unpack, get settled, maybe sit down and read a little bit. Uh, just really, really unwind with gratitude because I was sitting on my flight on my way to Austin and I was thinking like, you know, how often do we have conversations with ourselves that we're proud of ourselves? How often do we have that? Uh, we're always like, oh, I didn't do enough today. Oh, I forgot to email this person back. Oh, I always did this. But do we often sit down and say, you know, I'm really proud of you because you got that done today. Or I'm really proud of you because you made your bed. Or I'm really proud of you because you made lunch. Like, it could be something that simple. But for me, I was sitting there thinking, I'm really proud of you that you've built these relationships that continue to grow, that are now flying you places and putting you in amazing hotels. And you're living this like dream. You know, I, I sat in the bathtub at the Ritz Carlton. I'm like, can you imagine when you were 16 thinking that like this would be your life? That you'd be like first night in the tub at the Ritz Carlton, listening to some fantasy sports radio, just like getting ready to go and and be around people I love and, and do some content for them and, and commission their draft and get them into fantasy football, bring them into my world. Like these are things I just started to realize I'm so proud of and I'm so grateful. And I'm also so grateful for all of you, for the friendships that I've built through the many walks of my life. And this friendship that I'm going to share with you today, my guest, when I first got into fantasy football, Bob Harris was one of the first people to reach out to me, to stay engaged with me, and to check on me. In my mind, Bob Harris was the one person that was the most aware of what I was up against, was also very paid attention to how people spoke to me on Twitter, and was the most encouraging. Right away, reaching out, hey, you know me, at Football Diehard, I'm Football Diehards. Uh, we have a magazine, we have a website, we want to give you login, we want to send you the magazine. If you need anything, tips, you know, you have any ideas, you want to do this. And he would constantly reach out. And we became so close. Like I've made Bob dinner at my house in LA when he was in LA for the Allison Chains draft. And then 
The next trip that he was in LA, we drove to Orange County together for the Allen's and Chains concert after the draft. We went to the concert together in LA as well. Like this friendship is just built. Bob has gone on an incredible fitness journey on his own. And you can see the before and after pictures on his timeline. He is just so full of incredible information. We could sit on the phone and just talk for hours. Bob is the reason that I went to a plant-based diet. Bob Harris is the man who sent me a book, Eat to Live, explained to me what he was doing and said, try it, you know, just try this for like six months. I was like, I'll experiment with this. I think it's a great idea. We started watching all the same documentaries. So our, our football friendship grew to be this amazing friendship of so many other things and his support will never be discounted by me. I know what he was doing. I know he was always checking on me to make sure I'm good. And he's still words of encouragement about my content or about my podcast are always just incredibly kind. It was also Bob Harris that got me to get an Instapot. Well, 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 how many of you in my life have one of those right now because of me? I forced them on everyone. I made everyone, I got everyone an Instapot. Amazon, my Instapot orders, like it's just a thing because at the time we were really learning about different things and, and beans are such a big thing to replace the iron and things where you're not eating meat. And so cooking the beans in the Instapot and soaking them overnight and rinsing them, like there were all these recipes and soups. And so I get the Instapot. There has been this parallel line with Bob Harris and I since 2013, and now today I will get to share him with you. But first, a little word about my sponsor, Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life, and it can also help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes to like stepping up to the plate. You know what I mean. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in a chewable tablet at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead and be prepared to step up to that plate. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. You can use my code LISA, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew is made in the USA and is prepared and shipped directly to you in discreet packaging. Sign up at bluechew.com today. Use my code LISA. Don't forget to use my code LISA at sign up at bluechew.com. Now you need to follow at football diehards. You're going to need to list at football diehard. You're going to need to listen to football diehards on fantasy sports radio. Mike Dempsey and Bob Harris. Today, I bring you my friend Bob Harris, who shares the great story about how long he has been in this world of fantasy football. The fantasy football season is here. I should say the NFL season is here, but to those of us, what really matters is fantasy football. And that would be one legendary Hall of Famer himself joining me today, football diehard himself. Lisa Ann, so kind of you to have me on. Uh, and speaking of legendary, one of the pioneers on the woman's side, uh, at least in the, uh, the information and the entertainment portion of this. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be on with you and, and uh, happy to do it. Bob, it's just so much fun to be where I am now, especially, you know, I do the draft orders on Cameo and I'm getting leagues that I've done their draft order for two or three years and there's a messaging feature and I get to smack talk the loser and, and prop up the winner and also meeting more and more people. Fantasy sports really brings people together, which is something I didn't learn till 2013. But you, my friend, a pioneer in the world of fantasy sports. From before we had the ease and access of little apps on the phone, tell us how this began and how much change you've seen from then to now. It began in the year of our Lord, 1986, when a friend of mine went away to work in California, came back to our little group of friends and said, I found this thing and we're, you're going to love it. And it was fantasy football and he was correct. We did love it so much. We couldn't get enough of it, but it took like a week to figure out we don't have all the information we need to do this right. You would, you know, set your lineups in the middle of the week based on the injury report you got on Wednesday. By the time Sunday rolled around, things had changed. We just didn't know it. And nobody knew it, right? There would be players that you had in your lineup that were listed as probable or whatever. And all of a sudden, they're not playing. And you had no idea why or what was happening. I said, I've got to close this gap. 
I was a bit of a graphic designer and I made a little newsletter for the team, you know, each week and kind of wrote up with some smack talk and some, you know, newsy bits. But I said, we need real news to make this work. And so I started heading in that direction uh, and I decided I was going to launch a business based on this need for information. And so everybody at that time used USA Today as their scoring sheet. You got the Monday morning USA Today, you ran out and grabbed the box scores and you scored your league. Well, oh. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to, let me just say that sounds like a nightmare. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 you know, it was, but it wasn't right. Cause we didn't know any better. There was nothing else. That was just, that was how you did it. And honestly, it was kind of part of the fun. Like you usually had one person in your league who was assigned a task to, to handle all the scoring for everybody. But at the same time, everyone ran out and got their own and you're doing all your numbers and you're waiting for the official version, but you kind of have an idea. Well, also, there had to be a trust factor there. So I can imagine you wanted to do your own stats on each player to make sure there was no Double mistakes check. happening, that maybe you lost by three points, but you actually won. Yeah, not all of us are lawyers, but we are all litigious in the fantasy <laughs> football world. There is uh, no 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 narrow cracks or crevices of uh, controversy that we won't explore. So, uh, and, and we will be contentious about it. So yes. uh, just realizing this need for information, I just decided I'm, I'm going to do this. And so over the course of time, started developing contacts, calling teams. Turns out every fantasy manager on earth called teams. Well, I said, well, I'm actually a business who gives those people information. So maybe, just maybe you could give them my 800 number when they call you for information and they could call me and I'll help them out. But maybe I call you every other day or so and get the information. So started working on that, put an ad in USA Today. And at first I had like a single phone line. And I could not answer it fast enough. It was constantly, it rang 24 hours a day. So <laughs> within a year, I had 10 phone lines. I had a 900 number that I started putting. I started reading the box scores into 900, into the, my 900 number Sunday night, get them off CompuServe. This is like 1993 when the computer just was becoming a thing. And, uh, and that's, how I, that's how I survived for the first few years of this was that 900 number would carry me through the entire year. But we also did like a weekly fa uh, fax service as part of this where we gave them that updated information. And I did that with a kid in New York. His name was Steve Cohen, who now kind of runs Sirius uh, XM Fantasy, Sirius XM Sports. Uh, but he worked at WFAN as a producer and he was out there calling all the teams. I think he was on the Mike Francesa show or something. He would call all the teams. He had this information. He'd call me. I'd write a fax, send it out that day. Of course, the technology, not what it was then or what it would soon be, but I would try to send out my faxes on computer on a single phone line. So when somebody's fax was late and they would call in, it would destroy the whole system. It would collapse. So I would sit there in a puddle of sweat, tears running down my face as I'm trying to get these faxes out. Uh, fax broadcasting then became a thing. And I think it was 1995, one of my subscribers called and said, hey, have you ever heard of the World Wide Web? I said, no, what is that? He said, well, it's this thing. And by the time he had talked to me for 10 minutes, I said, wait, you're telling me all the things I pay a bunch of money to do right now, I can do for free and reach as many people as I want. There's no limit. Yes, that is correct. Hello, internet. So, and the internet is, Lisa, you know, is what has driven this industry throughout. There soon became commissioner software platforms and the information that's available there uh, kind of became the thing, but it's been a long, arduous path to get where we are now. And, uh, and it's been, it was, it was fun as hell. Back in the day, there were a small handful of us that did this. We were all kind of frenemies and battled and competed and kind of gave each other secrets. So it was a good time. I think we should go back to one statement here, because if I have some younger listeners, they might not know what the word fax means. Right. I will tell you this, when I first started my studies, so I meet Matt Deutsch uh, in, in May of 2013. And so I spent that summer and I read every single book about fantasy sports, about rotisserie, about every, every type of fantasy sports. And every book had the same underlying thing that said, we were so excited when fax machines were invented because up until that point, if you didn't have coworkers in your league, you would mail out or you would have to call people and read them their stats. So if you were a commissioner of a 12 team league, you're making these 11 calls and it's all day Monday. And I, my mind was blown that this was like, you know, because fax machines were great for medical providers. They were great for, you know, people, lawyers, you know, important paperwork. But to think the fantasy sports world at that time 
was looking at a fax machine as a major tool. And you're, you, you reminded me of something else, business fax. We were getting spams on our fax machine, right? It was like junk mail on the fax. So the, the second year I did it was a broadcast service, you know, came and, and solicited me and I signed up right away because you could send one fax to them and they send out a thousand at a time. And so oh. I'd had, you know, after multiple heart attacks and heartaches and heartbreaks and crying and everything that under the sun, I said, oh, this is a godsend. And then the internet was like, oh my gosh, where has this been all my life? Because I actually printed things out and mailed them. You're putting, you know, you're trying to get a product out to get to people before the weekend in the mail. It's a little dicey at best. It's uh, a little so, dicey. There's bad weather depending on where they leave with, with, and also the expense. That. I think you brought that up. You had said, I can do all of this for free. For anyone that ran anything through the mail before the internet, I think we look at the internet as a greater tool. I remember sitting on my living room floor and running a fan club and taking a class at Golden West College to learn how to use print shops so I could make newsletters. Like I remember that. So when the internet was introduced to us, we were like, what? This is free. I don't have to schlep to the post office. I don't have to hope something doesn't get returned to me or I don't have the correct address. There's all of those facts that, that this comes to you. So now the internet happens. You already had experience as a graphic designer. So you were comfortable, probably more comfortable than most yeah. stepping in front of a computer. You were probably one of the few people in your frenemy group that were like, oh, I can handle this. How did you dive into the internet? In the beginning, when we had those wonderful CDs and the dial up, that sound that would come on, that dial up. <laughs> well, as a bit of a graphic designer, I realized that uh, my website was whatever I made it. Uh, like, if I wanted to make it, if I wanted to be Microsoft, I could look like Microsoft. Nobody would know. And so I became, in addition to a fantasy football person, an award winning web designer. Uh, and as my sites dragged to more attention, I can remember the uh, Fort Worth Star Telegram did a top 5% of the web. There was a bunch of awards. And they called me and to interview me after I won this award. And they said, man, this site is amazing. All this content, all the design aspects. How many people do you have there working for you? And I'm sitting there in my undershorts and sweat and <laughs> going, why should I tell them? Yes, have a 50 people here, you know, just like, but because that's what the internet allowed you to do. You could be whatever you presented. And so I went about, you know, it was an interesting time because, you know, the whole universe of HTML and design were just kind of coming around. And so were the technologies uh, shortly thereafter. Like before it was JavaScript, there was actual Java applets and things like that. So a fellow who was well known in the community, David Dodds, who is with Football Guys, recently retired. He and I would spend hours on the phone hacking into sites, uh, trying to figure out how their technology works so we could actually collect money. Most of them porn sites because they were the only ones making money at that time. And we ran the internet, baby. Right, you we did. You, the whole thing off the ground, okay? You drove tons of technology. I mean, you um, know, because there, that's where the money was going so they could actually afford the technology. So yeah. uh, between the design and figuring out some of the technologies, I ended up, and, you know, one of the things I realized was, well, you know, I want to make this whole thing a thing. And so of the people that I, that were also doing it, those frenemies, I started helping them and designing their websites and doing things for them because my belief was, look, if I fill the pool a little higher, we all float a little higher and we look like a legitimate thing. And that was important to me. And so I don't know if it ever in the end uh, really got me anything other than some uh, goodwill over the course of time. But I do think, you know, the, the a professional presentation goes a long way. And that was the that was the great leveling aspect of the internet was you could look like whatever you could do. And you know, some people couldn't do very much and they didn't look like very much and they fell by the wayside and died. And those of us who looked like they could do something and were something kind of went forward. And I think there came a point where, you know, the NFL kind of resisted this whole thing because at the time they were, you know, fearful of the gambling aspect of it. Uh, but at some point, somebody put out a, a, a survey, a study where they, re, you know, basically, you know, everyone who plays fantasy football watches every damn minute every of every game. game. Every right? They game. don't care if it's a blowout. They don't give. They Doesn't don't care. matter. Every and, streaming service to watch games. We would have never paid for Red Zone. We would have never had to have DirecTV at one time. We wouldn't have done any of these things if it wasn't for fantasy football. We'd watch our one team like it was when I was growing up. And back then, the Cowboys, I would tell everybody, like, they were America's team because in America, only like three or four games were broadcasted. I mean, we did not have right. the ability to watch every single game that was played and to watch it edited and to watch the Red Zone and all these things. So, 
How many years ago was it that the NFL finally realized, oh, this is good for business? It was about 1996, seven that they started coming around and started coming to their senses and, you know, started blowing a little bit of promotional wind into our sales. And that grew things exponentially. And it kind of, you know, that was kind of a big turning point when the NFL, instead of, you know, refusing to admit we existed, reluctantly realized that we were a big revenue stream and started pushing a little bit. And they've, of course, you know, leveraged that all along to the point where they are now. I mean, you watch a football game, you hear fantasy football talk, right? Everybody, everybody's in on the fun. Players are playing. Uh, you know, Austin there's a ticker Eckler's. tape now. There's a ticker right. tape. There's a ticker so tape. All day long. Specifically for leading us. wide receivers, leading running backs, leading tight ends, leading QBs. So during this time, your man hours were a lot more because it was harder to get information. Yes. Now there's so much information out there. It's almost overwhelming. How many hours a day during the football season do you put? Because when I picture you, like anytime I see an injury, I hear something happen at camp. I picture you standing at your counter pre-writing the article, getting ready for the real facts to come in because I know you constantly update footballdiehards.com. Yes, it's it's a race, right? And that's that's what kind of what it's turned into now because that information is so available. The job almost now is more of limiting the information, filtering, if you will, to get the people just what they need. I mean, I'm going to hear 10 different reporters from the, you know, report on the same incident and they're all going to have different views. You kind of draw out that little thread of truth as you get more information, but you do, it's a little bit of a process. And when somebody's hurt, I'll do a quick update. Then 10 minutes later, as you get more information, you'll do another update. So during the course of the day, I'm racing to do these updates and it's just, it literally is a race where I don't really have time to process the information. I'm just trying to get it out. That's where going on the radio on Sirius comes in, where you get to sit down and stop and talk about all the things that happened during the day. And it actually gives me a break to kind of sort my thoughts out, come up with some opinions on things. Then when the show is over, I get back to work and I write more in-depth analysis of what I think all the things that happened during the day mean. So it's kind of a round-the-clock chase during the season. The hours are lengthy. Uh, and, uh, and that's kind of how it works. I mean, that's the name of the game. This business is a grind and, uh, you have to enjoy the grind, but also you're doing something you love. I mean, work is play essentially. It's still work, but it's much better than digging ditches. The only other thing I'm qualified for. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're qualified for a lot more things than that, Bob, but you also, you know, your show with Dempsey, you know, it's great because you have so many other, you have beat reporters coming on. I love that now you're having a guest stay on and answer listener questions, uh, whether it's a draft or whether it's a, my next picked up or who do you like more? You get a lot of great back and forth conversation. How long have you, you and Mike Dempsey been working together? Oh, it goes back to well before Sirius uh, back in the day. I mentioned David Dawes. He was with Football Guys, uh, which is a very large website. And, and he would do hits on Dempsey's, uh, th- Mike Dempsey is who we're referring to, his terrestrial show at Jacksonville. And uh, and so uh, I was doing some work for Football Guys. David Dawes could not make it one day. I want to say this is back in, you know, probably 2010, maybe a little before. Okay. And uh, And so I went on and I was a little slicker than David at the time. Uh, a little more facile with uh, putting out the information. And so I did it once and Dempsey asked him, hey, can I keep using this guy? And so he and I started doing more and more of his shows. And it just kind of became a thing where I became a regular. The aforementioned Steve Cohen at some point when he took over Sirius wanted to have a player do a show. That player was Maurice Jones Drew on the Sirius Fantasy Channel. I remember that when I started, he was still doing his show. Yep. Right. So Steve is scouting people in Jacksonville, trying to find a host to work with Maurice Jones Drew, who is in Jacksonville. He's listening on the Internet archives and he hears me and Dempsey doing our best. Well, of course, he knows me because he was writing for me and doing stuff for me in the early 90s. And he calls me up, Harris, I think we got a thing here. And so it kind of cycled into the show. And so we've been on series now. I think this I want to say this is our 11th year. Uh, so it's, you know, it's been quite a wild ride and, uh, and we've had some great times. Like you and I met at a Super Bowl working for Sirius and yep. uh, in San Francisco. And so, I mean, it's just been amazing. Some of the things we you and I both have got to do working for that network. Uh, and it's hard to imagine, you know, uh, the, the people it's brought together, John Hansen, the guru who I talked to, uh, you know, oh, he was one of those frenemies early on. And the interesting thing about this business, and I'll tell you a, a, an additional part of this, I had worked 
with and against him, helped him with his website. We hated each other and, you know, all those things. And, and through all those years, I think for, he got into the business, I want to say in 94, 95, we met, I think it was a 20, I want to say 2014 for the first time hosting a show together, covering a draft live on Sirius. In Philadelphia. We were all there. That was when it so, was in Philly. Yeah. So, you know, these are the first times you meet people. Scott Engel, who I had worked been around we've started the fantasy sports writers association in i want to say 2004 but we have been working together prior to that i just met him for the first time in person this past weekend at the fantasy football expo in canton ohio you met the king i met met the the king King for the first time and let me tell you i'm told i missed the karaoke night but i'm told the king was a dominant force on the 80s i will tell you the king um the the serious xm holiday party the kim the king would bust out on the dance floor and mind-blowing moves but the reason i asked about dempsey is you guys have such a great connection on air it's just a great show you got a lot of inside jokes uh you've known each other for a long time and the great thing about listening to good fantasy shows is the hosts do not always have to agree. No. And it's even better for a listener when you don't, because both of you raise great points that you believe in, and it allows us to have more information. Doesn't matter who likes who more. It's the fact that I get like three points from Mike Dempsey, three points from you, and then I get to sit and make my own decision. And it's such helpful information listening live or listening on demand. I don't miss a show, but what you do in the paperwork end of this is really what shines when you're on air because you have more data collected than any of right. us, Bob. Right. It all, it, you know, it all works hand in glove, right? You know, the collection of the information, the kind of processing it, hashing it out with Dempsey, uh, getting our opinions out there. And this is like the last space on earth where you can disagree with people and not be wrong or right. Other, you know, there's a lot of nuance to this. And, and even though people want to see things of black and white, there's a range of possible outcomes for every situation. And fantasy managers kind of embrace that and realize that it's just like, you know, people will say, well, I bet you win every championship. Well, no, I don't. I am just like you. Right. And that's the thing about this community, whether you're uh, someone who does it for a living or you're out there playing, you all do the same thing. So, you know, I'm wrong on things all the time. You know what you do when you're wrong? You say, well, I was wrong. And here's why you try to use it as a teachable moment. And people appreciate that. Look, you're not fooling anyone. You know this better than anyone. You're not fooling anyone in this business. You better go in there knowing something and being on point with your information. And so if you have a wrong view based on the information, nobody cares because they've been wrong a thousand times too. You just have to have the information and present it to them in ways that they can make their decision. Look, we'll tell everyone on our show, you know, We'll tell you what we think, but at the end of the day, you're setting your lineup. You're the one kicking yourself in the ass on Monday morning when things go south. So if you don't agree with us, if you have your own opinion, your own gut feeling on something, go with that. Well, listen, from the moment the draft takes place, we are all completely neutral. None of us can avoid injury on our team. So, you know, you have a league one year where you have horrible luck, where, you know, your top five players are injured and every time you pick somebody up, they're getting, and then you might be looking at another league you're in and you've had great luck. It's week four. You haven't been bit by the injury bug just once, you know, you're just, so that's where it also becomes really something because everyone does expect anybody that's in this industry to, you know, win all of their leagues. And it's like, no, I draft players that get injured too. And no, I make bad calls too. Or sometimes it's just a lucky, a lucky choice or somebody landed to you and you get a hunch in the draft and you're like, you know, it's the seventh round. I think I'll take it. For me last year was, I didn't want to believe that Jamar Chase was bad. So Jamar Chase had a horrible preseason, but this is a kid who went door knocking to buy people's homes cash so he could live in the same neighborhood as his quarterback, Joe Burrow. Like their connection was like really something. And I was getting Jamar Chase seven to 10. I was getting Matthew Stafford and I was getting Cooper cup. It was like just luck for me that I overdrafted those three players because my first three rounds injury, injury, injury. And I think, You've taught me a lot about the consistency, the need to always be looking at the waiver wire, the need to always be paying attention. But what are your like core values that you tell somebody who maybe wants to, for the first time, get into a league? Right. So I just want to quickly, what you said about the luck and everything. There's so, so it reminds me of something a NASCAR driver would will often say. You put in all this work and preparation, Right. They fine tune those cars. They study the tracks. They, they work practice. Out. So they work shape. out. They do all these yeah, things. Yeah. 
and they're driving around and they're doing their best and then something happens and they'll say a phrase, I became a passenger at that point, right? Oh, That's what happens yeah. here. They go from being the driver to being the passenger because the yeah. car is just going to do what it does. That's what happens with your fantasy team. For If you're out there and you want to get into fantasy football, uh, I think there's things you should you know understand. You should have a good understanding of football. Right. You don't want to go in there and not know the various positions. This is mostly based on what the skilled players do. So you should understand who the skilled players are who have the biggest workloads. And if you want to just start out simple, chase volume. Go after players who have large workloads. Does it always work out? No. Nothing always works out. But more often than not, if you have a player who has the ball in his hands more than other players at his position, that gives you a little leverage over the field. And that's the name of the game whether you're playing regular redraft, weekly fantasy football, dynasty league football, daily fantasy football, all of these things leverage over the field at each position is what you're looking for. And the players who get the ball the most give you that, those opportunities. There's a downside to that. They also have more opportunities to get hurt. So you have to be prepared and understand who plays behind them. So you have to put in the work and the effort, but you can dive in and get your feet wet, start having some fun just by, you know, just by drafting really good players. There are rankings out there available to everyone. You mentioned footballdiaries.com, but they're ubiquitous on the internet. You can find always someone willing to give you an opinion and show you a list of players. And if you're not feeling really comfortable or confident when you get into it, go ahead and use somebody else's list. Over time, you're going to say, oh, wow, I see what they're doing. And you'll catch on and it will take no time at all. It's an addictive thing. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, be prepared to spend more time than you want doing this. But it's it's so much fun. And, you know, we all have that, you know, any sports fan out there has that that drive in them. I know more than that general manager. I could outdo that coach. I'm the smartest person in the room. Well, maybe you are. This is an opportunity to at least prove that you're the smartest player in your person in your league. And the the key to that is being the best informed. You can't, you're not out there. You can't throw a block for anybody. You're not calling any plays. You're not wrapping anybody's ankle up, right? What you can do is be the best informed manager in your league at any given time, just to make a little better decision here, a slightly better decision there, avoid some trouble here, take advantage of a matchup there. These are the things you can do. And that's why, that's what people are grinding on. So uh, I, I will hope everybody dives in and has a little fun with it. There is no better. And the camaraderie, if you play with your friends in local leagues, that's fantastic. If you just want to try it online, people are open and welcoming. You can jump into leagues. They start every day on every commissioner platform. You can play daily fantasy sports and dive in, play against the entire world at any given time. So there's no shortage of ways to play. Even if you don't feel like the people around you want to play, there are people out there who will play with you. Agreed. You know, and I always suggest getting into a free fun league first. You don't have to put any money into it. You can just do it to have some fun. You get some bragging rights at the end of the day. But what surprised me the most getting into this community was just the closeness that you feel with your league mates. You know, summer comes, we all do our own thing. People travel, people have families, they go on trips. And then from draft time till the Super Bowl, you have this extended world of people that you're either smack talking, you're offering trades, you know, there's so much conversation being had that's not personal. We're not talking about politics. We're not talking right. about the news. And none of it is that serious, but you have these great back and forths going that I think are just really healthy. You know, it's just these, not everything has to be about us. Not everything has to be serious. And this is definitely neither. And it's so true how fun it is. Sports is the great escape, right? I mean, that's what we can all use. And and this gets, this let fantasy sports allows you to dive into that to whatever level you like, right? And so when you're, when I'm creating content, I realize there are people who, you know, they just, they want the highlights. They want to be able to do it in a minute. But there are other people, probably the same people who read the back of shampoo bottles while they're sitting on the toilet, who want every bit of information they can. You have to provide that wide range. But there's something there for everyone, whatever level you want to dive in. And I think even the people who just want to do the shallow a little move at first, they end up going deeper each year because once you get drawn in, then the competitive juices started flowing. Then you start seeing what other people are doing and how they're gaining advantage. Is you want to get over on them? There's all these aspects to it. It's just a. It's really. I mean, I want to say good, wholesome fun. Uh, but is. there's a there. You know, to the degree sports is like uh, the escape. This is the ultimate escape. I agree. I call it the game within the game. Yeah. Uh, that's really what it reminds me of. It's you know, and it's the it's the years that you see these relationships holding on for. I just met someone at my building who has a 30 year league 
And so when they were doing it, they had their stats guy worked in the office and Monday they, he didn't do any work. And they were like, you know, financial planners, like he didn't do any work. His only job was to get everybody's stats done, manage the league. And they're still in that league. What I find is people come to me and everybody wants to know, so what do you listen to? What, what do you read? Uh, what magazines do you buy? Uh, you know, because I'm constantly listening because there's quite a few opinions out there. I like, and I also we've, we're in camp mode. So like anything can happen all day. I feel like if I just listened for two hours, sure. I'd get a wrap up of it, but nothing better than here. And like, we've got breaking news. I mean, right. I don't even care if it's a broken ankle. I just want to know the broken news first. <laughs> right. And part of this, you know, part of the art, you know, the art of this is, is understanding, you know, the information is going to come. We get into this time of year and we see the thing that's in front of us and we're getting literally information from the field. Oh, he made a great move on this guy in practice. And you can, if you're out there in the draft rooms, you can see that player rising and falling based on these things. It's good to take a step back, people, and of gain course. a little perspective. But it's hard as well. I mean, and that's part of the uh, part of the fun of it is kind of you know how you handle that flow of information. You know, going back into the '90s when we were like cheer- crawling around on the floor looking for crumbs. Here we are now, like someone shoved a fire hose down our throat, and it's called Twitter, and <laughs> turn it on full blast. There's so much information now. The problem is already, yeah, now, yeah, you can literally watch players play play by play and practice and going, yes. Oh my gosh, there's a, there's like a sub industry of doctors out there who watch tape of injuries and immediately give you assessments to try and help you get an edge. It's gotten off the hook. Ridiculous. And I love every bit of it. I love every bit of it as well, Bob. Everyone can follow you as I do at football diehard. This was an awesome conversation. I want everybody to be as excited about this as we are, obviously. Uh, all of your writing, you've been a Hall of Fame writer. All of your writing is found at the football diehards. It is. And everyone's going to follow you at football diehard. But Bob Harris, I'm ready for the season. My drafts are starting to land in my calendar. And I just feel this excitement to be on the couch all day on Sunday at watching games. Yeah, clear some space to be on the radio because we love to have you on. You know that. And you know I love to visit you guys. That yeah, is happening. Do. Thanks for joining me here today, Bob. Thanks, Lisa Ann. Now you can see the friendship here. Uh, Bob is just so incredibly amazing, and I know I'm a better person because Bob Harris entered my life along with this world of fantasy football, the madness that is the thing that I love. But look, look how doing something different has introduced me to different people and shown me a whole new world, and Bob Harris is a big part of it. Give him a follow at Football Diehard. It is time for the moment that you've all been waiting for. Yes, that is correct. The mailbag. If you have a question for me, whether it be about me, whether it be about my book, whether it be about sports, maybe fantasy football, maybe a podcast you already saw, you can send your question to asklisaann at gmail.com. I've got just a couple today and it has been a while since we, I say we, because this mailbag is ours. We're in this together. Okay. And we're always in it together every Friday night at 8 PM Eastern on my YouTube channel for the watch party of the video component. It's a great time to chat, uh, talk about little things from the conversations, elaborate on things, share stories. I love doing the YouTube live premiere every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, my YouTube channel, The Real Lisa Ann. But it's been a minute since we got an email where the entire email is in the subject matter. So here goes. And funny thing, when people do the subject matter, They also seem to be all caps people. So this is an all caps subject matter. Hi, Lisa. How do I pursue being a male porn star? I'm a huge fan of yours. No bodies that email. He said it all. He really did. It's all he really wants to know. Uh, How do you reply to something like this? Google it. Uh, That is a Google situation. You can Google it. Assert yourself. I had to write to companies by mail. Okay. I had to write to them by mail. I had to hire a photographer, get photos developed, choose the ones that I wanted, have them blown up into eight by 10, write a letter, mail it to California. It was a two year process. And all you have to do in today's day and age is Google. So use that tool. We got another one here. Ross says, this is great. I like how this is flipping because what this means is I'm finally being seen as something of value in a different world than just dating because I'm starting to get asked for different things. Hi, I am a big fan. Can I please get $10 to take care of something? 
with the praying hand emojis. I'm being asked for $10. So we know that's not happening because again, it's just not a question. And I do do a lot of charity work and I do donate to a lot of charities, but I do not think personal donations are really my gem. Okay. We got another one right here and it is from Paul. Paul says a question, does your book exist on eBay and Eli Express, the Chinese site, which I'd never heard of, or just Amazon? At the end of the day, I want to say I respect you and admire, admire you as a person and a poor performer and all what you've been thrown. I love your passion for the NFL and I hope you're doing good with your family. If not, it's their loss. Um, I don't know. There might be some copies of my book on eBay. I'm sure there's people reselling. I don't know about the other site, but yes, Amazon is the place to go. I don't ship to China over. It's just the fees wise and it takes forever to get there and it's always an issue. So try Amazon. Two books, two. First book came out in December of 2015. That book is called The Life. The second book came out digital copy, December of 2021, and the actual hard copy and paperbacks in January of 2022. And that is the life back. My store is shoplisaann.com, or you can search for those books on Amazon. And I thank you so much for those kind words, Paul. All right. We got one, two more here. Uh, our friend Mark, who writes regularly, Peggy's husband. We love Mark and Peggy. Mark says, Hello, Miss Lisa Ann, and thank you for having KDO on your podcast. I can't wait to check her podcast. From an early age, I knew that I was different from other kids. As I grew to adulthood, I couldn't understand why I didn't see why I did see things the way I did. At 50, I went to a doctor and was told I was a classic ADHD personality. I started reading every book on the disorder I could find, and so did Peggy. The more we read, the better we understood why I am the way that I am. I remember all of the spankings I got as a child because I couldn't be quiet or sit still. The comments from every teacher I had in grade school just went to answer all of the questions we had about why I was the way I am. I am so thankful that kids today have the advantage to know about ADHD and be treated for it and be understood. I'm gathering all kinds of content from my podcast. I'm excited about it. I made a goal of starting it by January of 2023. I hope you have the time of your life with your new fantasy football broadcast. You sound so excited and it does my heart good. Our very best to you from Peggy and Mark. We must all support Mark's podcast when it comes out for sure. But I love this conversation. I thank you, Mark. You always put such thought into your emails. But it is real that we're all very different. And generations in the past didn't have the understanding and didn't have the communication now. And I think it's so great that we can be properly diagnosed and, and, and properly treated and also aware, just being aware because we're all a little bit different. No two of us are made the same, but to know kind of what you're up against means you can face it. It's kind of like a, a good defense watching film on a team's offense because they want to know what they're up against. You get better defense when you have more information. And because of these conversations, like that awesome conversation with KDO on my podcast, Dudes Do Better. So, you know, Dudes Do Better is exclusively on my YouTube channel, The Real Lisa Ann. But that pod, that episode really opened up a lot of conversation with friends of mine as well. And I loved KDO and I love that she has a wild adventure podcast based on two friends with ADHD. So check that out. Uh, last email right here. Jason says, Dear Miss Ann, Hello. I just want to respectfully say have a happy and healthy and safe Labor Day weekend. That's all. Thank you. Never hurts to write a kind email. And that is why I will be writing an amazing review for Jose for that amazing massage I got to have when I was at the Four Seasons in Austin. It was amazing. Uh, it was just, just amazing. But kindness, we just put these words down and we send them out. You know what that is for Jason? It's incredible karma. It's the fact that he's taking a moment out of his day to just say kind words to someone else. And I appreciate that. I appreciate most of the emails, not all, but most. I definitely appreciate my friend, Bob Harris. Hopefully you're going to reach out at Football Die Hard and stay connected with him. He is a lovely human being who has made my life so much easier, made me so much more comfortable in my own skin, has just been a rock in my fantasy football world. Blue Chew right here. Don't forget, you can get discreet packaging, dissolvable tablets to your door. Use my code Lisa and 
my flavor of the day of Fit Soda was root beer vanilla float. It was a great time with the Fit Soda family. Make sure you check out Follow Fit Sodas on TikTok. Follow Fit Sodas on Instagram because that's where we will be dropping this new fun thing that you're going to love called Fit Soda Famous. I thank you so much for making the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you are ready for the NFL season. I know you don't all listen and watch the NFL, but for those of you who do, this is our season and we are very excited. That's why I thought it'd be really cool to have on Bob for this episode. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Lisa Ann Experience. 